Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Ron Man Gaming. I am Ron Man, and in today's episode, I'm taking a look at the Flintstones for Sega Genesis. Also, if you're new here and you like my content, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, as well as that bell notification so you stay up to date with Ron Man Gaming. The Flintstones is an action platformer that was developed by Santos Limited and published by Taito for the Sega Genesis in 1993. The Flintstones is a single player game only where you take control of Fred. Before each stage, someone from the show will ask you to get back a certain item. Once you complete a stage, you'll win back the requested item. Rinse and repeat. And uh, that's the game's story. Put your life on the line for a bunch of replaceable tangible objects. There are a total of six levels. I'm not sure why Wikipedia states that there are 20 24 levels. Maybe they're counting each segment between checkpoints as separate stages, but either way, this game has six levels. Although this game was not made by Taito, there are similarities to the other Flintstones games released around the same time. It may come as no surprise, but all the levels are highly varied both in terms of visuals and gameplay mechanics. There's a lot of platforming, climbing ledges, and defeating enemies. There are also quite a few auto-scrolling segments like riding on this train, among a few others. Much like other Flintstones titles, Titles, controlling Fred will feel very similar. He has the iconic club that you can charge for more damage, and clinging onto ledges is required to make it through the stages. Occasionally, you'll find red dinosaur eggs. If you attack them with your club, you'll release a pterodactyl which you'll be able to ride for a limited time. This game also does not feature any sub-weapons. It's just you and your club. Throughout the stages, the items you'll come across are stars, extra lives, and power-ups which increase strength. You'll also find heart containers which increase increase your maximum health. If you die, you'll lose a heart container which will lower your maximum health, although this game does offer plenty of heart containers throughout all stages. This game does not feature a password system and you do not have unlimited continues, which means you'll have to beat this in one setting without making too many mistakes. The overall difficulty is not too bad, although I didn't play this game on hard, but I'll talk more about the difficulty when I talk about the level design. One thing that this game is missing is a world map screen. It's really not a big deal, but I just happen to enjoy world map screens. It's my opinion that because world map screens visually connect the world, it really helps to create a bigger sense of cohesion, which enhances the sense of adventure. Sadly, this game lacks a world map completely, which also means that this game is very linear. For better or for worse, this game does not feature optional sports stages that you may have come to expect. Before starting a new game, you'll notice the options menu. One major thing to note here is that you can adjust the difficulty. Although this is one of those games where if you decide to play on easy, you will not be able to see the whole game. They cut you off after stage 4, but playing on normal or hard will allow you to beat the game. So don't waste your time with easy. Now let me get to the point here. This is a good Flintstones game, but I think it might be the weakest of all the good Flintstones games. The biggest problem here is the level design, but also how it's related to the difficulty. The level layouts are not offensive, but they do feel uninspired and maybe a little bland. There are secrets to find, so exploring may be worth your time. In terms of difficulty, everything starts out as per usual. You know, not too hard, you feel safe to experiment with the controls, and that's fine. But starting around stage 5, the difficulty increases significantly, but for stupid reasons. They just throw a whole bunch of instant death traps at you that, unless you've played this game before, you won't see coming. Like, just watch this. I'm making my way through this volcano stage and suddenly they add in falling ground. So, the first time through, I didn't see it coming. You can barely tell the difference between ground that falls and ground that doesn't. Look at this part here. They make the ground fall right after this fire, so the first time I jumped over this fire, of course I fell in the hole, and I continue to fall in that very hole. I kept forgetting that the game does this, and I died many times. It's the mark of good game design if the developers can increase the difficulty while still maintaining intuitive level design. None of what you see here is intuitive. Then there's this part where you have to stand on this rising platform. The idea is that eventually you have to jump and cling onto a ledge, but there were times where the platform would just disappear and I would die. I couldn't figure out why this would happen. Sometimes I'd make it, and sometimes I wouldn't. Also, clinging onto ledges is usually 
usually not a problem, but in this stage, for whatever reason, clinging onto that ledge proved to be a real problem and I never did figure out the science behind all this. Eventually, I just got lucky and made it through. Again, I do think this is a good game, but I think the developers dropped the ball a little here. The controls are simple, but work well and are responsive. It's just A or C to jump and B to attack. The music is okay. In my opinion, it doesn't really stand out, but I do enjoy how relaxing the water levels music is. And that's about all there is to say about the Flintstones on Sega Genesis. It's not quite as good as the other good Flintstones games, and that's probably because this wasn't made by Taito, but it is still worth checking out. Sadly, the price is starting to climb. As of the recording of this video, you can snag a loose cart for $93 Canadian or $70 American. For that price, I'm not sure if I would recommend it, but it is a decent game. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Ron Man, and I'll catch you in the next video.